Hello and welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fana Neptune. Today we have with us at the health planner in the Ministry of Health, Lauren James, who will speak with us on the Health System Strengthening Project. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Fana. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Can you tell us what is the Health System Strengthening Project and its objectives? The Health System Strengthening Project is a four-year project funded by the World Bank in being implemented in the Ministry of Health. It, is basically, it basically looks at strengthening our primary health care system as well as strengthening our preparedness for any public health emergency that we may have as well as the implementation of national health insurance. Okay, and you mentioned it's a four-year project. When did this project start? It started approximately a year and a half ago. Um, basically, for the first year, we were busy preparing the project unit for the implementation of the project. But it is fully fledged now and it is ongoing now. Okay, and who is the, um, which organization is funding this project and what is the total cost? The World Bank is funding this project to the tune of 25 million US dollars. What are the different areas um, to be achieved under this program? First of all, let me just um, give a brief background as to why this project came about. As far back as 97, when, um, 1997, when the health task team was um, commissioned to look at the health reform that was needed in our health system. Basically, they came with a health sector reform white paper, which basically outlined a number of areas that needed strengthening within our primary health care system, our health system as a whole, sorry. It looked at the financing, it looked at our primary health care, looked at the burden of disease and what needed strengthening to address those issues. So basically, right now, although we had all these dream, those, that dream list, there was really no funding for that. But right now, you could say that we actually got what we wanted from way back when. So we actually have the financing now to implement all that we have been seeking to do in the health system. Basically, we have four components under this project. We have the first component, which looks at the implementation of our essential benefits package, which really is the implementation of the health insurance. We have the second component, which looks at the strengthening of primary health care system, and which also look at the implementation of a pilot program for the performance-based financing program. We are, we are also looking at the public health response preparedness, especially in light of all the public health emergencies we've been having, for example, Zika, chikungunya, we had um, SARS, there was Ebola, and now we have COVID-19. So we recognize the need to strengthen that aspect of our response. The third component um, looks at basically our the overhead costs for running the project. And the fourth component is basically a emergency response component, which allows you to deploy funds when necessary for dealing with any emergency that you may have. In this case, we were able to activate it for COVID-19, where a, an amount of 5 million was allocated to deal with the COVID-19 response. Great. And um, how would you say this project is expected to assist the government of St. Lucia in, as it relates to the delivery of its healthcare services to St. Lucians? Well, basically, um, recognizing the burden of disease, that, um, it, that we have the chronic non-communicable diseases, and for a long time, that has been the burden. We recognized there was something to do, di that we had to do something different. While we adopted the primary health care approach, we recognized that there was a need to strengthen our primary health care. Their focus has really been on our secondary health care, mm -hmm. but now they recognize it's need there's a need to focus our primary health care to avoid people from going to hospitals where it is less, where it's more costly to treat. So basically, it is intended to strengthen our primary health care while providing people with a means to which finance to finance accessing health care that they don't have to pay out of pocket. Great. And so far, the implementation of that project, what has the feedback been like? Well, basically, we at the stage we are at is basically putting structures in place. So not many persons are aware of the program. Basically, we are setting down the the framework for the implementation of our quality program, our essential benefits package. So there's not, there has not been much visibility with the public. Okay, but you can definitely say that the implementation so far has been running smoothly. Yes, I could say that. 
Okay, wonderful. Okay, well, we are due for a break. We'll be back in a moment. Good day, everyone. I am Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. In the management of COVID-19, there are actions that must be taken if you begin to feel unwell. First, you must monitor your symptoms. If you develop respiratory symptoms, such as fever, cough, runny nose, sneezing, sore throat, call one of the clinical support telephone numbers for advice. If the medical care provider tells you that the symptoms are mild, please follow the recommended steps of care. If your symptoms are moderate to severe, you will be advised to go to the respiratory clinic closest to you. Wear a face mask when leaving the house, especially if you are coughing or sneezing. This will prevent others from getting the infection. We recommend regular hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer when away from home. Also, avoid direct contact with others and also to reduce touching other surfaces. When going to the medical facility, please go directly to the medical provider. Do not sit among the other patients. Testing and treatment and care to persons with COVID-19 is free of charge. Work with the Ministry of Health and Wellness as we reduce the impact of COVID-19 on you and your families. For further information, please contact the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5347, 468-5349, or 468-5350. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with Lauren James on the Health System Strengthening Project. Before we took the break, you were mentioning the um, ways in which um, this project will help to assist in the delivery of services. And one of the main areas is the strengthening of the primary health care um, services. How do you intend, intend to actually do this? As you know, there has been a lot of um, criticism about our services, about um, the availability of services at our primary health care centers, which we, um, we have about 32 wellness centers, two district hospitals, one polyclinic. And basically that project will look at, um, we will basically do an assessment of what is missing and then attempt to strengthen in terms of looking at our infrastructure, looking at our equipment, our supplies, what is needed, looking at our human resource, what was the gap that is um, needed to really provide the level of service that is needed, especially in light of um, the implementation of a national health insurance. So we recognize the need to augment those services to meet the demand. And if we are saying that we are going to now be asking persons to access healthcare services there, we have to ensure that the, the services are available there. Okay, and before we go into the insurance that mm -hmm. you mentioned, what benefits um, does this project have for citizens or as a whole? Okay, citizens can expect to have a more strengthened primary health care system in terms of being, being able to access services there in terms of um, certain tests, the doctors um, being available, looking at the supplies, there's no shortage of supplies. We are also looking at um, persons not, be, not having to pay out of pocket to access services. So there'll be a prepayment mechanism, which is really what the health insurance is. And then you don't have, if there's any, based on your the package of services, then you'll be able to access care without having to think of where you're getting those services. They also expect to have a more strengthened public health response so that when we are hit with things like COVID, that we are not scrambling to try and mm -hmm. put structures in place that we already have it there. Great. Yeah. And um, the first phase of the implementation is has to do with the essential um, package of health services. Mm -hmm. Can you speak on this? Okay, um, basically what the ministry has done is to, to determine a, first, uh, a basic package of health services that includes a number of key areas based on our burden of disease. Because as you know, no one country can provide the whole gamut of services in the, in the health sector. So we have to start small and then persons, we will be requiring persons to pay a premium for this um, package prepay so that when, whenever that they need to access that, they don't have to pay out of pocket. Um, the first phase is supposed to be launched sometime this year and uh, persons can expect to not pay out of pocket for the, the services in the package. Okay. And can you speak a little more as it relates to the insurance? 
The mean? insurance is basically, um, the policy direction is that um, to employ the services of um, private health insurers to provide this coverage for, for persons. We have been in discussions with um, different stakeholders already about um, the need for the health, the health insurance through the private health insurer. And basically they would be covering the population and persons will be able to claim when they go to the different healthcare facilities that they'd have, they'd have some card to provide and they wouldn't have to pay out of pocket. Okay. So that would be the first phase of the, um, although a small package, but um, services that are really required at this, t at this point in time. Okay, so right now you're only at the first phase of the, of the project. Yeah, we're looking at the implementation of the first phase. That is just a smaller package. And as the fiscal space becomes um, better, that we are hoping to expand this package to include more services. Okay. And it also benefits not just the citizen, but also healthcare providers. Yes, that um, persons, uh, that the healthcare system will be able to generate the much needed cash that is um, that's needed to, to continue services. So we could expect that both private and the public sector would benefit from this new financing mechanism. It's really more of a financing mechanism for the health system that we are able to generate um, the needed cash to, to keep the services going at a at a certain level of quality. Great. And what final message would you like to leave um, with St. Lucians as it relates to the Health System Strengthening Project? For some of them, they might not know about that project. Well, what this project aims to do is really to strengthen all of the, the weaknesses that persons have been clamoring about in terms of going to health centers and not be able to see a doctor on the tests are not available. It, the, the project is basically get towards that. The government has recognized the need for persons to be able to access services without having to think about where the money is coming from. So it is really a mechanism to really remedy all the issues that we have been seeing in the health system for a while now in terms of quality, financing, etc. So the government has um, actually put its, its money where its mouth is and then now we have the money to implement all the measures that we have been seeking for so long. Okay. So we can definitely say that as time goes, persons will definitely get to see the benefits yes. under this project. That's correct. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being part of our program today. It was definitely a pleasure providing us with such valuable information on the Health System Strengthening Project. Thank you. Thank you for now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, that's how we come to the end of Health Focus. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Funnel Neptune. Thanks for watching.